String of Muslim murders leaves New Mexico community on edge. Recently, the horrific serial killing of four killings of four Muslim men of South Asian origin in Albuquerque, New Mexico, has sparked great fear in the Islamic con community of the United States. The victims include Mohammed Zahir Ahmadi, 62, from Afghanistan, Mohammed uh, Afzal Hussein, 27, Naim Hussein, 25, and Aftab Hussein, 41, all from Pakistan. The Turkish government condemned the killings and demanded that the perpetrators of these murders, quote, be found immediately and brought to justice. President Joe Biden tweeted that he is, quote, angered and saddened by the horrific killings of four Muslim men in Albuquerque. On August 8th, the brutal murders of the four men were linked to Mohammed Syed, the primary suspect in at least two of the killings. Syed is a refugee who moved from Afghanistan to the United States within the past 10 years and has denied his guilt. It was a tip from within the Albuquerque Muslim community that ultimately led the police to identify Syed. It has also been reported that Syed, a Sunni Muslim, was upset about his daughter's marriage to a Shia Muslim. Two of the victims were friends of his daughter and Shia Muslims. Bullet casings found in Syed's car matched the caliber of a weapon used to kill Aftab Hussein and Mohammed uh, Afzal Hussein, and he has since been charged with their murders. An investigation into the killings of Mohammed Zahir Ahmadi and Naim Hussein are still ongoing, with Syed as the primary suspect. Okay, so when this first happened, like, tell me if I'm getting this right or not, okay? Because there was a lot of assumption that there's some anti-Muslim hate happening, okay? And people came in and supporting the Muslim community. And they're like, oh my God, okay, like Muslims are being targeted. This is like probably an anti-Muslim far right action thing is happening, okay? But it turned out that it is, there's a Shia versus Sunni thing, not a non-Muslim. Maybe. maybe, we have to be really maybe. careful with asserting maybe. that because that's kind okay. of a rumor. Yes. Okay. This Sony is okay. No, never mind. Um, uh, so, but like, this is why you always like, we always have to be careful about how we say things. We have to be like, maybe like, we're not sure. Like if there, if this, if everything is being reported because the mm -hmm. outpouring, like, like the, all the tweets and all the people highlighting this, they're going to look, I don't know, like they're going to look like they were, they rushed uh too you know they were too fast with their condemnation without waiting to see what's actually happening and i suspect like i don't know if it if this is more of a shia versus sunni thing okay if that's true versus like a radical like right-leaning person attacking muslims this then is gonna I get don't dropped know if, by the liberal media like immediately yeah that's what i was gonna say you think so as well because a hundred percent well, I mean, the Turkish yeah. government, before it was revealed that the name of the suspect is Mohammed Syed, was like, you know, making these big pronouncements about, you know, finding the perpetrators, which is, of course, all very appreciated. But I think yeah. everyone was operating under the assumption that this is some white guy running around doing this because he doesn't like Muslim immigrants or something. And then yeah. they're like, oh, wait a second. This is a Muslim refugee who did this. Yeah. I mean... I mean, we would be covering it either way, like, right? Like we do cover stories of mm -hmm. right leading people or like oh my God, yeah. Muslims. Yeah. So we're like, like a, a, an atheist Republic, we would have like, either way we would have covered it. But this is why like every time, like we guys say in the live chat, like when I say like, we're not sure, like maybe this is what's happening. And you guys in the live chat, like Armin, of course, what are you talking about? Armin Susie, like, of course, this is like, yeah, we can never be sure. Like, you have to like withhold judgment. Like, sometimes, like, we don't, we're not careful, but we should be. But look at the Biden's tweet. I want to see if Biden would have said this. Do you? Okay, so Biden tweeted, "I am angered and saddened by the horrific killings uh, of four Muslim men in Albuquerque. While we await a full investigation, my prayers are with the victims, families, and my ad my administration stands strongly with the Muslim community." These hateful attacks have no place in America. So am I, maybe I'm assuming too much here, 
I think like if the news, I'm I'm guessing here, if it was earlier known, like he, he tweeted this before knowing that the attacker was a Muslim, correct? What's the date on that tweet? Yes. Okay. I think this tweet would not have been tweeted if they knew earlier that this was Muslim on Muslim violence. If they kind of mm-hmm. like, if the report suggested that. Am I might, mm-hmm. do you think that as well? Like, I, I don't 100% think like, agree. Hmm. Well, not 100%, but okay. Like, sure. Okay, true. Okay. Fair enough. I'm very yeah. much inclined to agree that there would be a strong media bias. Okay, what is this? The this Republic is the of pronouncement Turkey. by the Turkish government regarding these killings. Okay, wait, let's read that. Okay, says, oh, wait, can you we... make it bigger? Okay. okay. Uh, on... August 8th, 2021, press release regarding the killing of four Muslims in Albuquerque, United States, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Turkey. We are deeply concerned about the suspicious and consecutive killing of four Muslims since November, three of them taking place this week in a row in Albuquerque, United States. We would like the perpetrators of these serial killings, which could be related to one another as indicated by the police and are likely to be hate crimes, to be found immediately and brought to justice. We expect the relevant authorities in the United States to carry out all necessary investigations diligently in order to shed light on all aspects of this incident as soon as possible. On this occasion, we wish Allah's mercy upon those who lost their lives and offer our condolences to their families and loved ones. Okay, so, this so is are just they gonna... trying to signal that they're the global protectors of Muslims once again? Yes, yes. Are they going to continue following this case or are they not interested anymore? <laughs> like, that's what I want to know. Right? Are they going to be like, okay, we lost interest immediately question. because we don't actually care. We don't actually care about Muslims. We care about holding non Muslims responsible for victimizing Muslims. Okay? Like, because we don't actually care about people's lives. Like, I'm, that's my suspicion. I'm not sure, but I am right, I think. What's really yeah. interesting, so I want to I want to unpack certain aspects of this a little bit. So, first of all, they there was um a, an FBI, I think a former FBI investigator who said that this meets the qualifications of a serial murderer because the way that he executed at least two of these killings was literally as if he was hunting these men. Um like very diabolical in the way that they were targeted secondly so in terms of the sunni versus shia thing this is what we know so far that in 2018 the murderer suspect alleged murderer's daughter married a man who was a shia muslim this caused a lot of problems at some point this man assaulted his daughter's partner and there were going to be charges pressed against him, but they were dropped. Um, And they had this contention because of Shia versus Sunni. Now we know that two of these men who were victims were um, friends of his daughters. They were known to each other. Many of the victims knew each other and that at least two of them were Shia. We don't know if this is explicit. So far, the police have said that their idea about the motive is that this is interpersonal problems. But in, when specifically asked about if this was a Shia versus Sunni thing, the police like declined to give a, a comment. Probably, so when they say, oh, this is interpersonal problems, that doesn't necessarily preclude that it is a Shia versus Sunni thing. That could be that could be the interpersonal problem. Um, but what we also know is that this man, Mohammed Sayo, who's 51 years old, he claims to have fought alongside special forces against the Taliban in Afghanistan, that's very unlikely to have occurred based on his age. He would be way too old to have participated at that in those kinds of operations. But this is what he told the police. He also has a history of domestic abuse against his children, his spouse, and the partner of his daughter. All of those, he was previously facing three separate charges for domestic violence. All of those were dropped. And now he is sus- suspect number one in all of these killings in his home or in his vehicle they found guns they found ak-47s and they found some of these firearms had the 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 caliber 
the kind of caliber that was used to kill two of the victims. So they got him down pretty solidly so far on those two. They think that the others are connected. One thing that's really sad that I was reading about um, the story of the victims is that one of these men who was murdered had actually been attending the funeral of the two that had been murdered before him. What? And he'd been talking to his people in his community about like how crazy this is, like what's happening, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And he was the next who was targeted. Oh my God. And the, it's the Muslim community in Albuquerque was so terrified that the city was actually offering to offer meals delivered to people's homes because they were too afraid to leave their house. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, but also like really sad that people were brought to this point. And when Mohammed Syed was arrested, he was arrested in his car. There were investigators who were going to his house to execute a warrant. And as they were about to execute a warrant, they saw him leave in a car that fits the exact description of the car that they are looking for based on the drive-by shooting of one of the victims. So they're like, holy crap, this is our guy. They pull him over. Um, they find weapons in his car and stuff. And um, yeah, so, so they've they, they've they've taken him and they've arrested him. The community ha is pull, pull, pulling together to basically ask the judge under like no circumstances can he be granted bail. Like, please do not grant this man bail. He, we're very scared. He's very dangerous. Um, and now that he's been arrested, um, in some ways, it brings up more questions than answers, even for the community. Like how we have all these questions about how this seems to maybe be an inter-community thing. Like they also have all those questions about like, what what was the motivation behind this? Why did this happen? Um, mm -hmm. And um, there were many people interviewed who knew him that were like, we never would have expected this from this man, but I guess we didn't know him that bad, that, that well, because he, committed all this domestic abuse that we didn't, weren't even aware of. Um, so there's still so many details that need to be revealed about what went on here. Um, but it it's really sad. Like one of the men was a, a Sunni Muslim, a Shia Muslim who, you know, left Pakistan because of the per persecution he faced there for being a Shia. Another one also came wow. from Pakistan and he was like on the planning committee of this, the city that he lived in. And like the mayor worked with him and she was so proud of him. Another guy, he gained his American citizenship one week before he was murdered. Wow. So these Welcome are all men. America. And the, the first man who was killed was the owner of like his local sh halal shop. So these were all men who were like real contributors to their community who were like excited to be living in America. Like even there were some who weren't even citizens yet and they would say to their brothers, like, this is our country. Like we need to get out there and work hard and contribute. And they, you know, they were like, so they seemed to really be like good men who were excited about being a part of the fabric of the communities around them. And now they're gone for, they were targeted for reasons that we still don't understand. Hmm. Um, okay, so actually, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Ibeh is saying it is still anti Muslim hatred, though. Doesn't matter if the killer was a Muslim. Um, I don't know if you could call it anti Muslim, I think you could call it maybe anti Shia. If it is Shia, like, what if this just yeah. happens to be some sort of yeah, maybe. Ma no, maybe but if be, it is, who knows? For all we know, it could be like business dealings that were going wrong in the South Asian community. Like, it wouldn't be anti-Muslim hatred, like because the Muslim them them being Muslim is not the reason that they're being targeted. So I don't agree that it was still that we be know of. Yeah, that we know. Of, yeah, uh, Muhammad Ahmed is saying Ben Shapiro is having a great gotcha moment. Okay, the difference Did is he actually do that. I don't know, mm -hmm. but the, if he is, the difference is that he wouldn't be like highlighting this. Uh, if it wasn't a gotcha moment, like, you know, I mean, maybe he would highlight sure. it to dismiss it. Like we like, he would like, the, he's also one-sided from the other side. Like he wouldn't like, for example, here on this channel, we highlight, like, even if this is not anti-Muslim hatred, Muslims are targeted often, you know, um, just because it's like, some people will use this as an example to say like, oh, see, attacks on Muslims don't happen because of them being Muslims, right? Mm. 
Well, no, it does happen. Okay, even if this is not one of those examples, even if this is like doesn't happen to be that, right? Um, you wanted to say something before I highlight these comments? You want before you forget? You were like, <gasps> oh, damn it, you forgot. Sorry. No, it's right. okay. Okay. D saying, yeah, this dropped by the media once the suspect was identified as Muslim. Damn. So apparently, okay, so what does this mean? Like, Muslims' lives don't matter? Like, it's not, so it's not the Muslims' lives that matter. It's apparently the narrative that you could build around it that matters, right? Like, it has to be, mm -hmm. like, The narrative know, that right? they are persecuted by white supremacist hegemony. Yeah. That's that, that, Yeah, that's what, so don't act like, don't act like you're pro-Muslim because if you're pro-Muslim people, this story would still be as relevant because Muslim people died, right? Mm -hmm. And their lives were ruined. Um, Asian, -American Asian American is asking, has Turkey condemned the People's Republic of China for their yeah. Uyghur genocide? Actually, a good point. actually, wait, they have. Well, they used to, not anymore, actually. But And they deport, they were... they deport Uyghurs back to China that are trying okay, to escape. Okay true yeah. true true but originally before like they bent the knee they were the most aggressive ones against chinese treatment of muslims like they were like the lead like we were like okay turkey is doing something good because they want to show that they're like the protectors of muslims globally like they were really pushing for that image right so they were like but then they realized like china is too big and you you know so they pulled back a little bit okay like you need china you know, as a, as one authoritarian to another, you need to have your back. But originally, they were very aggressively pushing back against China's treatment of Muslims. Right? Um, yeah. Wait, there was something I wanted to say. I just remembered it, and then I forgot it again. Like shaky shaky. saying, "Didn't." It? Yeah, sorry. Like, um, mm -hmm. Asian Americans saying, "Why are so many nations bending the knee?" Well, because like United States, like. Tr um, has so many conditions for financing and trade um, and China doesn't have those conditions. So you need to have them as an alternative when it comes to, and also even if you want to keep your relationship with good with the United States, it's good to show the United States that you have an alternative just so that you get, get you could get better deals from the U S right. So it just mm. makes economic, it just makes economic and political sense, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't know. I really want to follow up on this story because I want to understand more about what happened. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. The mm. CARE, the Council of American Islamic Relations, put out a reward for thousands and thousands of dollars for any information about who was behind these killings. And to their credit, CARE did put out a press release, a press statement condemning any anti-Shia motive okay, in good. this murder, in these murders. See? So we acknowledge, good job, Susie. So we acknowledge when they're, when somebody is not pulling back, care, like, did a good job here. Okay. They're like, they're still interested. Like, we don't, like, yes, this was like, whether this is an anti Muslim attack or anti Shia attack, we are like pushing back. Okay. So, like, let's, let's give credit where credit is due. Good job, Susie. Thank you, Susie, for that information. I'm glad care, you, you get one point. Yes, one point. Uh, Rest, I have a lot of knocks against you. <laughs> Yeah, let, let's read this one. I think it's a good comment. Dorna Pet is saying, I sort of do that too in some of these cases. First, I think, was it an atheist? I hope it was an atheist. Please don't be an atheist. Oh, it wasn't an atheist. Time for cat videos. Uh, kitten videos. Um, I mean, if it, I, f I think if it's an... I don't know. I, I think I want to say something. I'm afraid that it, come, it comes across as bad. I think like the focus should be on the fact that the victims, right? Like the, the, I think the focus should be on how big the cost was to the victims, because mm -hmm. if it was an atheist versus a Muslim, I think we're focusing on the cost to us. Because let's say, for example, if it was like, let's say, like, if it was an atheist, then it would be used as a way to portray us as evil, right? But if it's a Muslim, then it would be unjustifiably be used to portray all Muslims as evil, right? Either way, the cost on the other side is the same. 
So we shouldn't care that much whether or not we are part of that group or not, because at the end of the day, somebody's going to pay that price, right? And the net effect is going to be the same. And whatever that cost is, is very minor compared to the cost that the victims are paying from the other end, right? So I think we shouldn't care that much about that other aspect of it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong because maybe I am being actually too. Actually, no. Maybe I'm wrong. I am wrong. Okay, because it's a little idealistic. No, no. Yeah, because like if it's like a black person or a Muslim, then we're like, okay, we, there's two costs. Yeah, I'm actually being insensitive towards like atheists, right? Because then we're like, okay, there's two concerns here. First of all, the victims, but now this is going to be used as stirring hatred against Muslims or black people or whatever other community, right? So I should be asked, no, you're right, Dornabhev. I should also extend the same feelings and the same concern towards the atheist community. I mean, that's literally our job, right? As the atheist republic. You're right, Dornabhev, I changed my mind. Like if we are concerned for the backlash against the Muslim community, we should also, but I don't know if the phrasing of that should be like, please don't be an atheist. Like, because whoever else it is, they also got to get the backlash. But I'm just saying we should be equally, we should be concerned from from the stereotypes or the hatred or backlash against any community that that individual happens to be, whether it's an atheist or a Muslim or a Christian. I think we should, call, you should, we should like stand and be like, okay, this does not apply to all of Christians or all of Muslims or all of atheists or all of Hindus or whatever. Anyways, okay, I think I came up with a good... Yeah, uh, sorry, just, that took a while. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.